Hello and welcome to Yorkshire for today's EMBN show. We have the pleasure of having the mountain bike uh, trials wizard, Chris Akrig, on the set today. Uh, he's been very busy spending time down at uh, very expensive hairdressers down at Hebden Bridge and outfitting himself pretty well. Uh, <coughs> Not taking this in my own garage, <laughs> this programme. <laughs> <laughs> also on today's show, we've uh, got some brand new e-mounted bikes from Cube and also from Crestline. Uh, Chris, uh, fantastic few days on the rocks in Yorkshire uh, and also in uh, Bronte country. Yeah. It's pretty fancy around here, isn't it? Um... It is for Yorkshire, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice. It's it's pretty. It's quite different to the south of the UK. It's uh... yeah. I mean, like we were talking about, you like your product to your environment. It's pretty uh, pretty rocky. Pretty well. It's Yorkshire grit, isn't it, Steve? Is that how you how you? Uh, I see this is going. I see this is going. <laughs> hey, now uh, a few new bikes come on the market this week. The first one is the new Cube AMS Hybrid. It's 140 mil travel. It features the Bosch SX drive on it. And I think the interesting story about this bike is the fact that the lightest one comes in at 16.2 kilos, making it, crikey, making it probably lighter than a mountain, an enduro mountain bike, right? Yeah, it's gonna be pretty close, isn't it, for some of them? Yeah, um, and uh, it comes with a 400 internal battery plus a 250 watt hour range extender. Um, three nine inch wheels, uh, as I said, 140 mil travel. I think the price on these is not bad, are they? Yeah, you're looking at um, what we're starting at, starting at five and a half grand and for the top end, we're looking at eight grand. Good That's one. probably the right kind of money to be sending up, spending on an e-bike, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Good price point. Yeah. Uh, cool. Let's quickly talk about e-bikes, actually. I mean, you've been riding them now for what? Four, four years. Well, four and a half. Four and a half years, yeah. Have they have they enabled you to expand your your riding since you've been riding them? I think what I always say, it's just a different thing. It's like, it's a different, it's not like your normal mountain bike. It's a different thing, you know, like you have the little fixie phase, you had loads of different phases, but the e-bikes thing's not going anywhere. They're only going to get better. They're obviously getting lighter. They're getting more affordable. Um, for me, it's just, you, you can just go out and explore more. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, I don't know, you could do that on a normal bike, but I feel like from a personal point of view, it just, it gets you further. You just, I think, yeah. to be honest, smile on your face. But, but what, what I'm getting at is, do you know when you ride in, you know, you ride something incredibly tech sections. I mean, we were with Josh Priceland a few days ago and Josh himself was blown away <laughs> by what you do. And, but does it, has it, what I'm trying to say, is, has it expanded your lines? Has, has it made your lines more difficult? Has it made them longer? Has it made them, give us a bit I of a- I think what it's brought into play a lot more, I find myself doing a lot more um, uphill based lines and mm. sections. Mm. Uh, not because you couldn't do them on another bike, it's just that you can play with them more and it, and it just looks better, you know? It's right, I mean, previously being ee, 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 yeah. that kind of style, whereas now we're watching you, it's more of a, it is more of a flow up the hill, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think like, obviously like, um, I grew up riding motorcycle trials uh, and it feels like it's more, my riding style now is even more so emulating that sort of style of riding on a motorcycle, which yeah. it's just for me in my head, I've just got like motorbike noise. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think in many ways, you know, we, uh, like uphill riding on e-bikes is, is still early days, isn't it? I think there's still a lot of learning, I think, I think maybe in 10 years time, uphill technical riding will be, might be a thing, right? I think it's becoming more a thing. I think people are really tuned into it. I mean, obviously like, you know, like flat now on an e-bike, whereas before on an old bike, you'd just be, you know, like it'd be a good challenge. But now it's like, you're having to find that gradient, you mm -hmm. know, almost like doing your normal lap backwards or, you know, things like that. You just, it's, it's, like you say, it's opening different doors. Yeah, uh, I think when we were in uh, North Wales recently, I think Chris went up possibly the steepest piece of rock I'd ever seen. If that went wrong, <laughs> if what that went wrong, that would have been that would have been broken leg, broken arm. Yeah, I mean that was. I think it was. It sort of started as a bit of a bet, didn't it? To be honest, and then it's <laughs> it sort of evolved. And then when you, and then it's like, oh, it actually can be done. That was insane. It's touch and go. Let's say it's it touch was. and go. Uh, now another news: Bosch have got some updates to their smart system. Um, with new features. This is a significant enhancement to the smart system. Now it means you can customize some of the settings on your bike. Now I saw you actually riding your bike and you, you very rarely ride in turbo mode, do you? Which is quite surprising. Yeah, I mean, hardly ever. Just every now and again when I need that, if there's plenty of grip and I just need that, you know, that full power, 
to go for like obviously like that little step that I was doing the other day. Little that's, step. <laughs> that's a, that's a full power move. There was plenty of grip, you know, and then. I like that. That was a full power move. <laughs> In right. every way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, well, that's, that's another let's not story. Let's not talk about yeah. that. Hey, but look, the, the great thing about this is that um, the second display compares athletic performance with the, more, with the motor power. That'll be good for you on, on some climbs. And also, new features, uh, rider, rider performance via display that shows usage levels of the different riding modes. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I think that'll uh, stop a couple of the naysayers, won't it? <laughs> if you can show them sort of powers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, another news: there's a German company uh, Pull Me have launched new towing rope. I've got I've got a tow rope in back. It can't <laughs> didn't cost that. It'll pull a bloody helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the Pull Me system uh, retails for sixty nine ninety euros. Available in four colours. Is your is your tow rope in four colours? And has a pulling capacity of 150 kilos. Now, I guess you pull your daughter dots up the hill. I can see a little little GT balance bike there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a cool thing. I think like a, it's great, isn't it? Like you can, you know, I've seen it done quite a lot of times when I went to Malvins. Right. You know, they're doing that up and down the hills, and it's it's cool to get the little kids up there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think this is possibly one of the most interesting pieces of news this week is the new limited edition Crestline RS180 Team Edition. Now, there's only 75 of these bikes being made. Uh, I think it's interesting this week because Aaron Gwynn, the five times World Cup downhill champion and winner of, crikey, I think he's won like 20 World Cup downhill races, is now, that's now his, his team for the World Cup uh, season 2024. <coughs> Great thing about this bike is it's actually adjustable from 150 mil travel up to 180 mil travel. So you can have a bike which is potentially a kind of Fox 38 style bike, or it can morph into like a, a bike with triple clamp forks. So mm. uh, very cool looking bike, a 29 or 29, 27.5 mix. Um, one build option, 11,999 euros. So it's a, bit, a little bit of a different price there, but um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this company hasn't been around for very long. I mean, I, to be honest, until we spoke about it earlier, I've not really heard of this company, so you were saying it's been around two years, I think? I think it's been around two, so three is, years, is, yeah. Does he have, is he part ownership in that? Or is he? Gwyn? Yeah. I, do, I, don't know the, I don't know the business details of ah, this, right. <laughs> but uh, I know that one of the owners used to be in the music business for quite a while, but uh, like I said, you know, one of, seven, this is 75 of these bikes being made, team edition, so, uh, get over to the Crestline website. A uh, couple of numbers on it, head angle 63.1, seat of angle uh, 77. Uh, and finally in the news this week, um, first German e-enduro championship is taking place this year. It's called the Orbea Wild Ride. I fancy doing any uh, racing? Yeah, that's probably answers that, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, the race will be held on uh, the 20th of May, 2024. It's going to take place in Winterberg. Uh, there'll be several classes for each as well, open categories, and the entry is 69 euros. So you don't fancy racing then? Do you know what? I did start thinking about it, and like when I was speaking to Josh the other day, he's got his enduro race going on later on this year. I think I might have a go at that. Maybe something else. I think it'd be cool to have, like, you know, yeah. just just get myself out of the, uh, out of the woods, maybe. <laughs> Any adventures coming up? Um, only with you, Steve. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> Crikey. I tell you what, that is an adventure, I can tell you that. <laughs> and it just. <laughs> uh, Chris, this is a part of the show where the viewers send in the cool places that they've been riding their e-mountain bikes over the last few weeks. Starting off this, I think this is the Rubber Duck Trail near Las Vegas. This is Jenny on a, a Specialist Kinevo comp. Yeah. What's wrong with Bath for them rubber ducks? <laughs> Well, maybe, yeah, good point, good point, yeah. Uh, and next up is uh, an old bear rise in near Lake Geneva. Obviously, Lake Geneva is L Lac Le Mans. Oh, yeah, that's the map. Oh, yeah, I see that. I that's, didn't see that then. Oh, I, I guess that's looking back. Is that, is, that, is that kind of north side or south side into kind of Morzine area? Uh, what's the coolest place you've been to riding bikes? You've been everywhere. You've been to like Japan and Australia. Yeah, I think and... Japan was really cool because like it's so different to everywhere else I've been. Yeah. You know, like riding through the bamboo forests and all that stuff. That was that was an amazing trip that yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely up there. But I guess some of probably my best trips have just been to Spain, you know, like right. all that area, you know, like you know stuff I like to ride. I, well, <laughs> well so so have the places that you want to go to changed since you've been riding e-bikes? Are you looking for different things? Um it was really funny when I first started like doing um doing edits on, well, my first e-bike edit, I was just like, what are we looking for? Are we looking for the same thing? Are we looking for mm. different things? And I think like that's just evolved now. It's just basically 
because I've learned to ride the bike pretty much like a normal bike, it doesn't really, it's just same old stuff, like weird. You know, like say that you, say somebody said, this place you'll really love to ride. I'm just like, nah, it's not my type of thing. Why? Because it's been designed to ride. Yeah. Actually, another thing I remember, well, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about this, because you said, to, you said to me a few weeks ago, weight is only ever an issue when the bike is lying on top of you or, <laughs> or something else, or when you're lifting on top of a car or something. Is yeah, that right? I think it do is. You be, do you mean that? I think so, yeah. I'm never, I'm never riding it and go, oh, this is heavy. Right. I mean, they are. They're heavy, aren't they? Well, it's the first thing people do when they pick yeah. up an e-mounted bike. and say, oh, that's heavy. Yeah, well, that's the first thing everybody does about bikes, isn't it? But yeah. when you get on a normal bike, you just go, oh, this is heavy when you're riding it. You don't, do you? No. But, like, on a, you just, I don't know. I just don't, it's like riding a motorbike. You just go, oh, this is heavy. Um, was was your white E160 heavier when it was lying on top of you yesterday? <laughs> I think you found out I was lying on top of it. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, Dan Forrest Dean, uh, albeit Wild FS. And then finally, this looks a bit cold. This is Ilari out in uh, Finland in a place called Kuopio. That looks like it could be a lake, is it? Could be a lake. It might be. It might be. It looks cold. Uh, folks, thanks so much for sending your uh, photographs in. Uh, some of them we'd like to go to, but maybe some of the cold ones we might avoid. Time now to see what Owen has been up to in the workshop. Welcome, Owen here, another one minute wonder. This time it is aligning your disc brakes. Uh, this is pretty easy for post mount. You'll need a five mil Allen key and you'll need some patience. Essentially get down and dirty and get close to the caliper. Undo those bolts just a little bit, not all the way. Uh, and then start trying to find a position where you can see the disc and you can see the pads and the space in between them. If it's super tight on both sides, uh, you might need to put a pad spacer in there. So wheel out, pad spacer in, open the pads up again and then reset the the disc brake pads, but essentially all you need to do is line up evenly the brake pads on either side of the disc and tighten it in position. Just be mindful as you tighten, if there's no washer on there, or even sometimes even if there is a washer, you will move the caliper a little bit. So make sure that you've got an eye line to that pad gap all the time. Tighten it up and pump the brake levers to double check that the piston's coming out and you should be good. Okay, let's move on to some uh, feedback and comments from you guys. First of all, uh, Mark Appleyard says, five years, this is in relation to a comment Anna made a few weeks ago that aluminium frames are only good for five years. Um, Mark Appleyard says, five years life for an al aluminium frame. Good job I bought an orange face to supplement my 2009 Orange 5 that's been well used over the years. No obvious signs of fatigue except in my knees. Well, I guess there's two things which are relevant to you there. Is One is knees. The second one is you're quite close to the orange factory. <laughs> and maybe the third one is, I guess, depends on how much you use your bike. Yeah, I'm going to say some people use it five times a week, some people <laughs> use it one time a week, some people are me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's kind of, it doesn't make sense, does it really? No, it's a bit ambiguous, I think, that one. Ambiguous? That's a big word, isn't it? <sighs> um, Rob Hatton, uh, I've read that you can't get parts for Shimano motors. Is that true for parts other than bearings? I think this might vary in different places. I think certainly here in the UK, things are taken care of by Madison. Actually, you had a, you were on a Shimano bike for years. Do you have I any problems on, with Shimano? I owned one for three years. Very little problems. Really? Yeah. I mean, given the beating. The, the, the sump outs that you do in your bike. Yeah, no, but I try to, I mean, I think that's a misconception really about oh, riding. Right. Because a lot of people think like, you know, I'm pretty heavy on bikes and stuff, but I'm just not because actually I do look after them. You know, unlike some people. Did you just here. say that on, on camera that you're not heavy on bikes? Yeah, yeah. I look, I look after my tackle, Have you, Steve. Did, did you? <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> did you actually see, I mean, Lou will back me. Did you actually see the size of the rock? You, went off yesterday. He couldn't believe it. Yeah, I know, but like, I, I, I try to land smoothly. I mean, sometimes when you're doing big things, it, it's heavy, <laughs> but you know, that's like, if somebody's, if somebody hasn't got the technique, they could be going off half the size and causing twice as much damage. Good point, good point. But it was, it was pretty big. Uh, and then finally, Steve uh, recently tried a mountain bike again. This is the first time I tried a mountain bike in six years at the trail over in Finale. Um, a normal bike. Oh, it was pain. going up the hill. It was painful. It was it was just so slow and boring. Lead Le Mans says, loving my first EMTB, but am I correct in thinking I wouldn't be allowed to take it on a plane somewhere like this? If so, that is a negative. Um, well, uh, well, we've been talking about this this morning, haven't we? We have. Yeah. About it's 
Well, it's the batteries, isn't it? You can take the bike, but then these are batteries. Is the companies now doing, can you rent batteries you or can. what's that? You can, obviously, kind of, you know, e-mountain biking is getting increasingly popular. So different places, you know, France, Italy especially, there's places you can rent batteries. So places in Spain, you can rent batteries. I mean, the, the other alternative is actually, there's lots of, there's lots of higher places. I yeah. mean, a classic example is maybe Lake Garda. There's probably like 30 e-bike rental stores there. Yeah. Um, you know, me and Luby were in uh, Finale a couple of weeks ago and the company there, Evolve Cycles, rents both e-mountain bikes or normal mountain bikes for, I think it's like 70 euros a day. So yeah. when, you, when, you, when you put everything together, I think kind of, there's not much in it between renting a bike and also flying because, you know, the cost of putting a bike on the plane with a bag and everything. Yeah. I mean, the other option is you get a van, throw all your mates in, yeah. make it a nice road trip. A road trip, now there's an idea. <clears throat> We've been filming with Chris the last few days up in Yorkshire. Um, it didn't all go to plan, did it? This is a bit of a behind the scenes look at what, <laughs> what can go wrong. I mean, this rock step is huge. It is like, it's almost the height of a bike when you tip it on its head. It's, what is it? It's about, it's a good four foot, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just shy of shoulder height, I think, to yeah. be honest. But... What did you call it earlier? A full power line. Yeah, it's, it's full power, head down, and yeah, last minute, <laughs> make sure it works. And I, I, mean, it, I mean, it's, it's yeah, it did go wrong. So this, Chris, we thought it was game over for a few days. You did injure your knee quite a bit on this, didn't you? Yeah, I don't know. I think what, like I was saying, um, the problem is when you, when you fall, if you can get away from the bike, you're sort of a master of your own destiny. But when the bike's <laughs> underneath you, and not even that, my feet were underneath the handlebars, and you yeah, it's just... You're it's helpless. Just, it's, you're it's, helpless. Just, it's just a mess. It's, it's just a mess. You're I'd, a real passenger. I'd say it's possibly, because I did it myself on Chris's rocks a couple of years ago, I think it's, it's the most... It's embarrassing, it's helpless. You, you, you can't do anything about it, it's, can you? It's almost degrading, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as you can see in these photographs, it did happen to a magician like Chris Ackrig. Right, we're going to leave it to Chris Ackrick to give nice or super nice to this week's bike vault. First of all, Thomas's 2024 YT decoy. What am I saying? Nice. Or super nice. Oh, I think it's nice. Okay, right. You've been hanging around with Martin Ashton too much, haven't you? Uh, well, Darren. I... Go on. No, it's all right. Go on. My, t my teacher said at school, I can only remember one thing, he was a horrible person, but he said never use the word nice. Really? Yeah. Don't know why. Well, should we change it for this week then? What should we, what, what should we call them instead? I didn't like it. I'm going to call it nice capital letters. Okay, right. Uh, Darren Mondringer Crafty. This isn't far from my house, Punchbowl and Abergavenny. Nice location. Yes, yeah, pretty decent. I can you know, like middle, middle work. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. And what about this then? Gareth Nuke Proof Megawatt in Benashi and Aberdeenshire. That's nice. <laughs> and then finally, Jeff Santa Cruz Bullet in Llandegla. Do you know what I'd say about that bike? What? It's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it for the bike vault, folks. Uh, do you know what? I think the bike vault submissions just get better and better. Some absolute belters there. Thank you so much. Nice. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. That's it for social. Uh, moving on now to a bit of community action. Uh, we've been talking about crank length on the EMBN community. Do you actually know what crank length you ride? Uh, and have you actually ever changed it on your bike? So we actually we actually done a video on crack le- cr- crank length. So if you've not seen it, uh, <laughs> go and check that out. Uh, that's it for this week's EMBN show. Um, thanks so much for hosting us from not Yorkshire. Ah, problem. <laughs> Uh, and on the channel on Sunday, we've actually got Josh Bryceland uh, going head to head with Chris Ackrig on some pretty serious <laughs> bits of terrain. So don't miss that one for sure. Chris, thanks for uh, all your time in Yorkshire. Thank you very much. Cheers.